Well, good morning again. Uh, my name is Bill Muran. I'm the senior judge for this morning. I'll be the only judge uh, this morning. I'm a retired uh, healthcare executive. I currently serve on several boards and I do community service work. And this is my sixth year in the competition and fifth year as a senior judge. So I'm very much looking forward to uh, hearing your presentations this morning. Um, you know, you're on your second day, you're on the home stretch. Um, the teams I had yesterday, I was extremely impressed with, and as I'm sure I will be today. And uh, my comments at the end will be only uh, uh, observations or thoughts I may have about your presentation. So relax. You know, this is, uh, you know, you're on the downslope here, and uh, we'll really enjoy doing this this morning. I'm going to read the instructions so that everyone is clear on the instructions. Um, you have been called back by the company you gave your full present to, presentation to for a second visit. They've asked you to speak only about the ethical aspects of the problem that you presented yesterday and to explain why your solution successfully handles any ethical problems. You will have 10 minutes. There will be no Q&A afterwards. You may not use slides or video. You probably don't want to have more than two or three members of your team do this. I will provide feedback after your presentation. At nine minutes, I'll give you a signal that there's one minute left on your presentation, and then we'll cut it off at 10 minutes. Is, is everyone clear on that? Are there any questions? We'll get started. I will uh, start the timer when you're ready to go. So let's uh, begin with the uh, Clean Future Consulting team. Uh, you're on board. And so tell me when you're ready to uh, start. All right, we are ready. Hello, my name is Emma Chesbro. I'm the Chief Sustainability Officer here at CFC. And I want to thank the Home Depot Sustainability Council for having our team back here today. We live in a world where the top 1% of the population holds nearly two thirds of the world's wealth making income equality a fight that must be fought side by side with the major corporations that have the financial resources to enact change, such as Home Depot. However, this change cannot come by simply funding those who are underfunded. We must provide the, those communities with the ways to sustain that change for lifetimes to come. In a world where societies fight over everything from religion to water, where social hierarchies are based to revolve around the money a person holds in the bank rather than the knowledge they obtain, where children and women are bought and sold like property, a terrifying world where in some cultures, children are often asked to pick up the slack because a job holds more weight than an education. A world where governments have the power to not only perpetuate poverty and inequality, but embed it deep into the system they create. This is the world we have designed up to this day, and I've watched these events unfold throughout my life. However, what a shame it would be if we forgot this world's beauty. The beauty that we hope generations to come will get to experience. The beauty that brings us all here today and makes us strive to be better. It is a world filled with nature and humanity that mirror each other as they work hand in hand to perfect the balance. But have we fallen short? Have we failed in this balance and become selfish and obsessed with consumption with little regard for the ecosystems and environments that support our existence? And how do we level out the balance so that we not only take less, but give back to nature? It starts with a student, a curious young mind that has the potential to become a future leader, an opportunity to teach lessons that reach beyond the classroom further than the standardized test scores and the future college applications. Implementing sustainable education and lifestyle skills at a young age can promote a lifetime of change. We are sowing the seeds for change hand in hand with the generations that will be here to see them bloom. Regenerative gardening provides a lesson on not only biology and ecology, but also the value of every living thing on this earth. Teaching students how interconnected nature and humanity are to the extent that their leftovers can create new life and hence new food to consume. It puts the power in the hands of the children involved in the gardening, a power that isn't defined by a dollar sign or a degree, but pride in being able to work alongside the nature that supports us. Focusing this mission on city public schools can also institute a ripple of change that reaches beyond the classroom. Many communities in US cities are often characterized as low income food deserts, and the students in those communities often rely on school for nearly half of their daily caloric intake. These gardens can provide school lunches with nutrient dense plant based meals that can drive higher levels of focus and academic achievement. Not only that, but students also learn from a young age the importance of at home gardening, 
as well as a shift to more plant-based diets to reduce carbon emissions. However, students and Shirley schools cannot do this alone. Public schools in these communities, much like the community members themselves, are underserved and underfunded. They do not have the time, skills, or human capital to take on this challenge alone. Given the tools to advance academically and individually, we see a future where students are more motivated and able to change the communities they live in with the help of Home Depot. As an article published in 2017 by Forbes highlights the importance of corporate social responsibility in business today, stating that roughly 82% of US consumers at the time really considered CSR when making their purchases. Community engagement is one option of CSR practices that allows a major corporation to become more localized, interacting directly with the consumers in the area. However, financial investments and grants are only the first step in really committing to a positive community impact. And nearly six years later, we have seen a shift in stakeholders' interests from social responsibility to social justice. The Harvard Business Review explains the steps in which a company can take in making this shift to CSJ. Beginning with a vision, Home Depot has already stated their commitment to not only communities, but also to educating stakeholders on how to lower their individual impact and become more sustainable. When evaluating this vision through the lens of CSJ, we see that this positions Home Depot as the bridge connecting individuals to sustainable living. We believe that aiming this mission towards educating urban elementary school students can provide Home Depot with the greatest potential for long-term change. We see the initiatives and investments already put in place by your company. However, Home Depot has the resources to take community engagement even further. Team Depot volunteers to connect the community to the, to the company, which allows for not only hands-on engagement, but also improving employee morale, attracting talent to the company, and expanding both internal and external collaboration. With Team Depot already in place and having thousands of members and nearly millions of volunteer hours, the, com the company is well positioned to take on a task such as the regenerative gardens. You can provide the physical assistance in building and maintaining the gardens and have the knowledge and skills to train others on how to sustain these practices. Hands-on education and training in this new age is vital to the success of SDG number four, specifically section 4.7, which asks that sustainable living education be implemented into curricula and taught by 2030. And now you will hear more from my colleague, Joey, our ethical advisor. Thanks so much, Emma. So first, I'd like to provide more context in regard to our motivations for proposing this initiative. The disparity in funding for public schools in cities versus suburbs is common knowledge. This in itself leads to the conclusion that the decision to fund public schools with the taxpayer dollar is unethical and that it is unevenly beneficial to people. This is a core roadblock to achieving the level of equity that we're looking for in alignment with the UN's fourth SDG. According to Bloomberg News, public school students enrolled in urban school districts receive about $2,100 less per student in funding than their suburban counterparts. Furthermore, our history of racial segregation and redlining in the US has caused a higher concentration of more low wealth communities of color in American cities than ever before. Zooming in further, Children in predominantly non-white districts receive about $1,321 less than students from predominantly white urban school districts. This is the result of certain schools utilizing their ability to self-fund and to self-govern to isolate themselves from one another. It's self-evident here that this quote, local control effect and the concentration of low wealth, predominantly non-white communities having underfunded schools can further explain the racial and socioeconomic disparity between suburban and urban school districts. This is a violation of human rights that has occurred right under our noses in the United States. We've rationalized a system where the socioeconomic status of people dictates the quality of their education that their children receive. So if we want to achieve greater levels of prosperity for all people, generation after generation, then this is the first hurdle that we're gonna to need to overcome. The time to begin closing that margin is now. Now I'm going to explain the results we expect to achieve as a result of our proposed initiative and how they're ethically beneficial to Home Depot and the society they serve. To begin, the University of Santa Clara's Marcula Center for Applied Ethics defines ethics as standards and practices that tell us how human beings ought to act in the many situations in which they find themselves. If we follow the center's framework for ethical decision-making with our two options being either implementing this decision or not doing so, then there's no ethical dilemma stopping Home Depot from committing to executing it. Now let's discuss how the individual, community, organizational, and societal levels of ethics 
are enhanced through Home Depot's creation of regenerative gardens in K through five schools. So first, at Clean Future Consulting, we believe that a quality, sustainable education for all is only possible when equity is present. Equity in this case is a fair chance for all students to receive an education rooted in interactive and meaningful learning under healthy conditions with nutritious food in their stomachs. Planting gardens at public city schools is an investment in closing the margin between suburban and urban public educations, considering there's a direct correlation between students involved in school nature areas and improved academic performance. Just the other day when speaking to a colleague of mine, I learned that his participation in uh, the maintenance of gardens at Princeton Day School in New Jersey enriched his ability to analyze the world through a sustainable lens. That same colleague started composting initiatives at his university in hopes of making an impact himself. On a personal note, I too raised monarch butterflies in watered gardens in elementary school, and it truly enriched the learning I was doing in every other subject. I remember having an easier time taking more away from math class in the afternoon after spending time watching the butterflies hatch from their cocoons. On a micro level, students will gain a greater understanding of how their core curriculum applies to the real world. Through activities like growing plants in a controlled classroom environment, where numeric values take on tangible value, for example. Furthermore, each student will gain the ability to analyze the world through a lens of sustainability as they move through their high school and college years. On an individual level, this initiative will be the catalyst for more equitable success to a well-rounded education across the board, regardless of a student's color, ethnicity, or socioeconomic status. On a community level, we want to achieve a reciprocal relationship between school districts and their surrounding communities through collaboration with Team Depot experts. This also provides an opportunity for Home Depot to gain a greater understanding of their consumer base and shared corporate knowledge becomes collective action. On a societal level, this initiative is not only creating a more equitable opportunity to obtain success for individuals and communities, but the return on investment in the form of human capital two to three decades into the future will be great. Home Depot's commitment to our proposed initiative will ensure that someone is setting up the generation most crucial in solving our lack of environmental justice for success. Thank you. Thank you, uh, right on time. Uh, very uh, uh, quickly, uh, very good presentation, uh, very well organized, uh, very good summary in the beginning to frame it. And then the specifics uh, that you close with uh, were crucial. Um, anytime that you're dealing with ethical issues, you always want to identify what the issue is, who is impacted, where there may be harm, and how that was evaluated in order to get to your conclusion at some point in time. Because there could be ethical issues that you, you consider but decide that you're gonna take a different course simply because the greater good is better off by doing something different. So uh, congratulations, well done. I appreciate it very much and good luck in the rest of the competition. Do you have any questions for me? No, I think we're all good. Thank you. You're, Thank you're you very, very welcome. welcome, very welcome. All right, our next team, uh, Carbon Consultants. Are you ready? Yeah, that's us. Oh, you yep. ready? Uh, take take a deep breath, and let me uh, get myself organized here. And when you're ready, uh, you may begin. All right. Okay, we are the Carbon Combat Combatant Consulting Group, hired to provide sustainability recommendations for you, the board of directors of Netflix. While Netflix only reports that streaming makes up a total of five percent of your emissions. The reality is that this number is a lot higher, around 75%. Even while it may not necessarily be Netflix's emissions to claim fault for, it is necessary that there become some awareness of the sheer volume of emissions that are connected with these streaming habits. As a result, we at the Carbon Combatants want to invite Netflix to make transparent practices more commonplace to help spread awareness among your consumers of the environmental implications of streaming. When considering sustainability, the three P's are what first come to mind. People, profit, and planet. These three are stakeholders in, in any company or project that is undertaken, and they are all ethically tied to our proposal to Netflix. 
With regards to people, it is important to consider both Netflix talent as well as Netflix's consumers. Through our recommendations to implement the options for the consumer to have a consumption timer, carbon use tracker, and ability to reduce video or audio quality, Netflix will demonstrate its commitment to the efforts of transparency in streaming. From an article by Business Insider, Netflix's average user is a millennial woman with over two thirds being deemed to identify as liberal or moderate in political views. And according to an article cited by the NASDAQ, 75% of millennials are eco-conscious to the point of changing their buying habits to favor environmentally friendly products. So logic would follow that the majority of your consumers would look upon your efforts for emissions tra transparency favorably. And not only will your consumers be happy, but Netflix will attract a more diverse and young talent pool by committing to this transparency. A study by Gallup has shown that in a post-pandemic world, candidates are more likely to consider the environmental practices of a company before applying for their vacancies, with 71% of workers saying they do consider a company's environment record. This leads us to the second P, profit. Through attracting a more diverse and young talent pool, Netflix effectively gains a competitive advantage. The talent will bring better content, which in turn brings a higher quality product that you can sell, which means more revenue. Furthermore, as we just learned, Netflix's target audience and consumers would likely see an increase of, of subscribers, or at the very least, see more brand loyalty and commitment. This means increased sales and a better, better bottom line. Additionally, for shareholders who desire to invest in a company that values sustainability efforts, Netflix is already a very clear winner. However, we have found that with our recommendations to implement transparency on the side of the consumer, there are opportunities to be viewed as even more sustainable and for Netflix to invite your consumers to be even more so with you. In creating more awareness around the carbon emissions associated with streaming, Investors and shareholders will witness Netflix's continuous and dedicated commitment to sustainability. An article published by Morgan Stanley, also used in the NASDAQ, found that 90% of millennials are interested in pursuing sustainable investments. Netflix will then only be the top of the list for prospective investors when you have the outwardly sustainable and transparent message of encouraging your consumers with the solutions of awareness that we are recommending. And finally, with the third P, the impact that Netflix's sustainability efforts have on the planet should speak for themselves. Creating the awareness of the amount of carbon emissions associated with streaming will help to educate and inform your consumers. In turn, Netflix's young and sustainably minded audience will inevitably make moves to reduce their carbon footprints. In doing so, the environment will be better off as Netflix gets a step closer to being carbon neutral. Since there is no intention to belittle or criticize the, cus the customer for their consumption habits, it is crucial that Netflix makes it clear that you are only implementing this as a potential option for consumers to choose to use. At the same time, it is important that you invite these consumers to join you in a step towards a more sustainable future in utilizing our recommended features. And finally, we find that with Netflix implementing these recommended features, you will solidify your position as industry leader with the increased talent pool and loyal consumers. You will also be known for your first mover advantage to the highly committed sustainability level, and we expect other streaming services to follow suit. In turn, this will have an all around positive effect for the environment in a domino effect. The ethicality of our recommendations to Netflix is that it is all well-rounded. There is no one area that is too heavily focused and in our evaluation of the three P's of sustainability, it is clear that all stakeholders will benefit. Next up, Alyssa will demonstrate the plausibility of Netflix implementing these recommendations and the difference that they will make. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. As the other ethical consultant for Netflix, I'm excited to build upon why Netflix should invest in sustainable solutions and limit its emissions. As a company that is an industry leader and has the potential to have a huge impact on the environment, we want to ensure that Netflix continues to be a leader in innovation while also doing its part in addressing climate change. Netflix has the funds and the sway to lead the way in terms of internal sustainability practices. Through these simple solutions for people of all ages, Netflix has the potential to help save our planet. 
The entertainment industry, like many others, has a significant carbon footprint. This means that every time we stream our favorite shows or movies on Netflix, from the British Baking Show to Bridgerton, we're contributing to the company's carbon emissions. While this may seem like a small contribution, it adds up. With over 200 million subscribers Netflix has that Netflix has, and it is only steadily increasing each year. Each hour, the Carbon Trust says that there is an average of 55 grams to 56 grams of carbon dioxide emissions for each hour of streaming a video. That is equivalent to driving about 300 meters in a car. Think about if Netflix had the potential to save carbon emissions for even a fourth of its subscribers. Based on an average of 3.5 hours of streaming per day per user on a yearly basis, quoted by Comparatech, times 50 million or a quarter subscribers, this would total to 11,907,025,471 miles of driving a car of carbon emissions. Think of the impact our solutions could have for the company if even a fourth of Netflix's subscribers participated in some way to reduce emissions from a reduced audio quality and video quality to a consumption timer. Regarding what Matt said, we understand that Netflix is not directly responsible for an individual consumption habits. However, taking ownership and showing the initiative to trying to reduce carbon emissions would not only be the right ethical decision, creating a long lasting impact, but would improve brand reputation. If many other companies for profit are not taking into account consumer streaming, Netflix would lead this initiative. Another point of consideration for Netflix that we recommend could be potentially partnering with other brands to continue to encourage sustainable practices, further demonstrating their commitment to being eco-friendly. One potential brand being Zero Waste Box. Zero Waste Box is a company that provides recycling solutions for hard to recycle materials. Netflix could partner with them to ensure that waste from their productions is recycled or properly disposed of. Another brand consideration being Patagonia. Patagonia is known for its sustainability efforts and ethical manufacturing practices. Netflix could partner with Patagonia to provide sustainable and ethically sourced wardrobe options for their productions. This would all be for Netflix's production sets. With these solutions, we are presented to Netflix. Solutions with a harm like cost could be slightly negative to Netflix's overall profit in the short term, yet, this is a small harm cost in comparison to changing Netflix for an improved future of human and environmental health. Also, in the long term, Netflix will likely be saving money as sustainable practices will inevitably be enforced as emissions to continue to climb and every streaming business will have to eventually adhere to the new policies costing them money to do so. Ultimately, the reduction of emissions is qualitative better for society as a whole in comparison to Netflix's image. So finding a future where balancing Netflix's brand image and our planet's outcome with the appropriate importance is needed. With regard to the three Ps, profit, planet, and people, Netflix's sustainability efforts would be more effective if the three Ps are kept in mind to ensure that each aspect is accounted for when building upon the carbon-friendly future for Netflix. With these solutions and the Continuation of sustainable practice Netflix has been pursuing. Carbon Combatants Consulting Group believes there are simple steps Netflix can take to keep in mind the best interests, their best interests, and those of consumers to create an equitable brand to positively impact the direction of streaming industry in an ethical manner. We encourage Netflix to Netflix and chill with the planet by going green. Thank you for your time. Well done. Um, you. <clears throat> Had a lot of information in a very short time. I know in 10 minutes, it's not easy to, to do it. But again, you framed it early on very well so that a board member can understand, uh, again, coming back, the framework of this, and then the deep dive going inside and being very specific about the impact of those decisions. Uh, so congratulations. Uh, again, another very good job. Um, so continue good luck uh, with the competition. All right, our third Thank team, you. Echo Renewable Solutions. Uh, are you about ready? Yeah, we're ready to go. All right. <clears throat> Let me just respond to a, a text I received from the 
course. After control here, so. Um, okay, um, whenever you're ready, I'll start the clock. You have 10 minutes, uh, you're on. All right, thank you. Hi everyone, and welcome back to our presentation today. My name is James Davies, and I am the Chief Financial Officer at Eco Renewable Solutions. I wanna thank you, the Board of Apple, for welcoming, welcoming us, welcoming, welcoming, oh my God, welcoming, oh, thank you for welcoming us back, welcoming, oh, it's all right, go. Welcome back today. Uh, today, I want to start you all with an ethical question. We all know the importance of recycling, but have you ever contemplated what would happen if we abandoned all of our recycling of solar panels? The first consequence of recy recycling solar panels would be pollution. The volume of groundwater is more than three, 30 times that of all surface water sources like lakes, rivers, and streams. Groundwater is essential to all to our lives as we use it for drinking, cooking, and all the other essential things that we do on a daily basis. Groundwater contamination can affect agricultural practices and economies that rely on groundwater for irrigation. As 40% of water used for, to irrigate crops is groundwater. Contaminated groundwater used for irrig irrig irrigation can potentially lead to crop damage for contamination, reduce crop yields and economic losses for agricultural communities. Throwing solar panels in landfills, for example, will lead to heavy metals such as lead and cadmium being absorbed into the groundwater. Those harmful chemicals can have detrimental effects on human health. And to be specific on the heavy metals I mentioned before, lead is known to impair brain development in children, and cadmium is known to cause cancer. We need to protect groundwater at all costs as it can cause serious health and economic problems if it becomes contaminated. Hi, I'm Juan Serenio, and I am the Chief Green Officer here at Eco Renewable Solutions. One of the biggest contributors to landfill, landfill waste is solar panels. As the use of solar panels continues to grow, so does the amount of waste that they generate. Disposing of this waste in landfills can have serious consequences for environment and human health. Did you know that there are over 3,000 active landfills and 10,000 closed landfills in the United States alone? While landfills are necessary for the proper disposal of solid wasteland, they have a significant environmental and social impact. Landfills are a societal necessity, and that's why we're excited to offer you a solution which will help you reduce the reliance on landfills and decrease their effects on the biosphere. One of the most pressing environmental concerns regarding landfills is the release of methane gas, a greenhouse gas and a huge contributor to climate change. Our solution helps to reduce methane emissions from landfills and also lower the risk of health problems for those who live and work near landfills. By working towards living a zero waste lifestyle, we can help reduce your reliance on landfills and decrease their impact on the environment and the human health. With almost 80 million tons of solar waste projected by 2050, it is more important than ever to invest in sustainable solutions. That's where our solution comes in by offering uh, us to help you properly dispose of end-of-life solar panels and ensure that their components are recycled and reused in new panels. But that's not all. Did you know that large landfills can have decreased a uh, decrease the value of a nearby land by almost 13 percent, with smaller landfills still having a significant impact? This often affects minority and low-income areas, which are more likely to find themselves home to landfill and hazardous waste sites. By reducing our reliance on landfills, we can also help to improve the value and livability of these communities, while also protecting natural resources, preventing pollution, and finally, positioning your business as a leader in sustainability. Hi, I'm Joanna Grova, and I'm the Chief Legal Officer here at Eco Renewable Solution. So stopping the recycling efforts of solar panels would lead also to the destruction of natural habitats. With no clear or defined plan, solar panels will end up in landfills leading to environmental pollution, soil and water contamination and habitat degradation. This has a very negative impact on local ecosystems, wildlife and natural habitats, including potential disruptions to soil quality, water quality and overall ecosystem health. Habitat loss is endangering our animal species. Lions, ferrets, turtles, pandas, among many other species are in danger of extinction. These species are paying because we're not being conscious and responsible for our waste. Our natural ecosystems are finding it hard to cope with the different pressures and are unable to adjust. 
If we continue depleting resources and destroying our environment, soon it will be too late for them to recover. As it is, our Earth cannot cope with the current rate of destruction. By failing to reuse what we already have, we will in, end up in a situation where we are running out of resources. Recycling of solar panels, on the other hand, can help recover valuable materials and reduce the environmental impacts of solar panel waste. Recycling processes for solar panels typically involve separating and recovering valuable materials for reuse, such as glass, aluminum, and silicon while properly managing and disposing of any hazardous materials in an environmentally responsible manner. This reduces the need for extraction of raw materials, conserve resources, and help the environmental footprint associated with solar panel production, transitioning towards a greener tomorrow. As we move towards a more sustainable future, it is becoming increasingly important for you to align your corporate social responsibility goals with regard to solar panel waste management practices. As the amount of solar panels continues to grow, it is crucial that we find the effective and affordable ways to dispose of it. As in 25 years, there will be a higher demand for recycling solar panels as they will be reaching the end of their functional life. And with no defined plan for recycling solar panels, we can see the future that we previously mentioned of increased health risks, overflow of landfills, and destruction of natural habitat to happen. We were consulted by you, Apple, to see where you could improve in terms of your sustainability goals. Apple's focus is to reduce its carbon footprint by zero by 2030. It has been doing this by transitioning its facilities and supply chain to 100% renewable energy. Our solution is designed to help you refocus your sustainability efforts by recommending an agreement with Cascade Eco Minerals, a solar panel recycling company that will serve as an independent contractor. However, as we reviewed Apple's goals, they do not consider the hazardous waste created by this shift to renewable energy. And together with Cascade Eco Mineral Zero Landfill Policy, all these solar panels, hazardous and non hazardous materials will not end up in landfills as they will either be reused or recycled. This potential agreement aims to tackle the hazardous waste created by Apple's shift to renewable energy. We aim to move Apple towards the future of solar panel recycling by moving towards the European model which is way ahead of where the U.S. is today. Apple has been investing heavily into solar panels as they have projects in 13 countries and seven in the U.S. We are aiming to start off small with one of Apple's solar farms in Newark, California. The goal of this project is to be a pilot solar farm for the rest of Apple solar projects, as if we don't start now, it has the potential to cost over $2.5 billion in 20 years to recycle all of Apple solar projects. So by choosing our solution, you can help reduce your organization's impact on the environment protect the health and well-being of your community, and promote a more sustainable future. So why wait? Join us in working towards a zero waste lifestyle and reducing our impact on solar panel waste. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, well done. Uh, a lot of information in a, a short period of time, but uh, you did a very good job from the very beginning talking about what the issue was and then taking that through and then dr drilling it down and then coming back and closing it out. So uh, very effective uh, presentation. Uh, so congratulations and congratulations to all of you. Uh, very well done. Um, I had a long career and have been on boards and listened to things for a long time. You should feel very good about your futures. And uh, if I was, uh, so working, I'd like to employ all of you because you're very, very bright. Uh, you present very, very well. Um, and I wish you the very best in, as you move forward in the competition um, to all of you. Good day, senior management and members of the board. I'm Victor Moreno, I'm the ethical advisor. I'm Ana Paola Ulloa and I'm the financial advisor. And we are going to represent Renovive. Today, we will present our analysis of the problem of excessive emissions generated by non-renewable sources of energy in the state of Aguascalientes, Mexico, and our proposed solution for a more sustainable future. We propose the implementation of solar panel banks in the city of Jose Maria, Aguascalientes, to address the issue of excessive emissions generated by non-renewable sources of energy. 
Our analysis shows that the initiative would provide affordable and clean energy to a population of 129,929 people and enable 310 establishments to engage in responsible energy consumption and manufacturing practices. It will also provide access to Wi-Fi and energy to over 22,000 students in the region between the ages of five and 14, improving the quality of education and promoting digital literacy. By prioritizing the transition to renewable energy sources, we can mitigate the, ne the negative impacts of climate change and create a more sustainable future for generations to come. In addition to the local environment and health impacts of non-renewable energy sources, it is important to consider the contribution to global warming and climate change. We have to be conscious that global warming is the number one enemy of the world today. The continued use of fossil fuels and other non-renewable sources of energy on a global scale is exponentially accelerating the effects of climate change, including rising temperatures, sea level rise, and more frequent and severe weather events. Transitioning to a renewable energy source, uh, such as solar power, is a critical step in mitigating the impacts and working towards a more sustainable future for our planet. Passing to the ethical aspects of it, we're going to be reviewing the social, cultural, economic, and environmental impacts. The social impact, the lack of access to affordable and clean energy, as well as Wi-Fi in, and energy in public schools can have a significant impact on people's lives, particularly those who are marginalized or live in poverty, like of course is the case of Jose Maria. The implementation of solar panel banks in Jose Maria can help address this issue and improve the quality of life of people in the region. However, public school teachers may need to undergo training to effectively incorporate these tools into their teaching methods. Despite the potential risk associated with providing Wi-Fi access to students who may not know uh, prior knowledge to internet safety, the school's Wi-Fi network will have restricted search browsers, as well as age restrictions to prevent access to inappropriate content. Additionally, having access to Wi-Fi and media will allow the population of Jose Maria to stay informed about current information on their surroundings, ultimately enhancing communication and, and a better understanding of the every, everyday undergoing information of the community. Moving on to the cultural impact. The implementation of, Q, of clean and affordable ener energy uh, usually involves the deployment of new technologies and as, and as uh, and as cities come closer to modernity, they often lose uh, cultural practices. Therefore, it is important that, um, that putting solar panel banks do not affect the areas dedicated to this. The Festival of the Calaveras in Aguascalientes is a good example of a cultural event that should be preserved. This festival is celebrated in Dia de Muertos or uh, Day of the Dead and it features music, dances, parades, art installations, food, etc. The event relies heavily on local production of materials, such as fabric, wood, papers, uh, etc. It is important to ensure that the festival and the areas dedicated to it are not negatively, negatively impacted by the implementation of new technologies. This includes maintaining the streets and ensuring that the noise or music does not interfere with the festival. The economic impact. The implementation of solar panel banks in Jose Maria would not only benefit the manufacturing industry, which is the main economic activity of the city, but also create more opportunities for entrepreneurship and small business development. With lower, with lower, cost, with lower production costs sorry, and reduced investment risk, individuals with limited resources will be more incentivized to pursue their business ideas and contribute to the local economy. This would lead to more job opportunities and a decrease in poverty levels in the region. However, it is important to ensure that, the, that while the transition towards clean energy does not negatively impact individuals employed in the traditional energy sector, such as the CFE, which is a governmental entity with monopolistic character in energy giving. Now the environmental impact. The implementation of clean and affordable energy in an area where manufacturing is a main economic activity will greatly reduce fossil fuel and coal emissions and waste, resulting in a healthier environment for the community. However, in the short term, 
There might be some negative impacts of the environment due to the transporting, terraforming, and machinery usage that, uh, that represents the project being put into place. Despite this, the long-term benefits of permanently, of permanently reducing the daily carbon footprint of the area outweighs by temporary harm caused by the project. There are also externalities to, you, to the use of solar panels. Throughout the process of energy transfer, conductive heat is produced, meaning that about 30% of the energy being transferred ends up in heat, in heat waves that contribute to the greenhouse effects. However, engines powered by fossil fuels and coils generate up to 80% of the exact same heat waves. Given the data presented, I can say with confidence that there really isn't an ethical motive capable of excusing not going for the implementation of this project. And now I'll pass the word to Paola. Thank you. Now, uh, we're gonna talk about the financial impact and the financial implications for this project. As we uh, pronounce, the town of Jose Maria may have significant financial impact affecting homes, businesses, and the economy in general because of the high cost and the use of non-renewable energy use. This use of non-renewable energy also leads to higher greenhouse gas emissions, which contribute to climate change and may have additional costs into society. Excessive enough of use of non-renewable energy can also have indirect impacts on the economy, such as decreased productivity and increase of transportation costs. The transition to renewable energy sources in the town of Jose Maria in Aguascalientes can have a significant financial impact. In the short term, we can generate economic and social benefits. And in the long term, we can have better plans for future generations. First, the initial investment infrastructure and equipment for being able to provide this renewable energy generation require a requiring a considerable budget, requiring a considerable budget, sorry. It is important to consider that this investment in renewable energy can be an opportunity also for obtaining financing and government support as well to attract foreign investments as we are aspiring that Mexican government will be involved in the permits that we will be requiring as well. We are trying to make a difference in a very marginated agricultural place in Mexico and the chance and the offer to our renewable energy solutions at homes and businesses in the town of Jose Maria to increase life quality for the future generations with Renovir. This project has a totaling of producing 11 million kilowatts per year for this town, just for just this town, with just the installation of the solar panels. This amount is half of the uh, use of the municipal public lightning system consumption that until now consumes 21.3 million kilowatts per year, that it's around a cost of $6.9 million. It is expected that with the estimated modest investment in the short term and the application of renewable energy with solar panels in the town, we could save up to $150,000 per year in energy costs for the buildings and the street illumination just in the town of Jose Maria. After five years for the long-term uh, results, almost $3 million per year could be saved with the implementation of the solar panels in the region and the sites designated in Jose Maria. Also with these solar panels, we will provide clean energy and functionality for around 30 years. With these implementations in the region, we expect to mitigate about amount the greenhouse effect with the region by reducing 19, 1700 90 uh, tons per year. And as our conclusion, we urge to consider our proposal for the implementation of solar panel banks in Jose Maria in a short term solution and for the implementation and in a long term solution to address the issue of excessive emissions generated by non renewable resources of energy in this region and providing a better future and safe environment for generations to come. Thank you for your time. Very good presentation. I wish I would have had the opportunity to um, hear your full 25 minute presentation uh, yesterday. It sounds very, 
Very interesting. Uh, good or organization on your presentation. You framed it from the beginning, got into some of the details. Um, by way of, you know, as a, as a board member, um, you know, sometimes you, you, you want to make sure you spend a little more time on the ethical impact um, and maybe a less, little less on the financial, but it all came together well. And that's just a suggestion to consider as you go forward. So, you know, um, when you get into that 90 second uh, presentation, you, you've got a lot of information. So you want to make sure you hone it down to what you think is the most critical, but really well done. And I'm sorry for the confusion this morning. Uh, but you all did very well uh, and i wish you the very best in the competition that goes goes on uh, you're on day two so you're you now almost almost uh, finished with the competition and you did very well uh, does anyone have any questions uh, before we end the uh, session <clears throat> well good luck on your uh, 92nd uh, presentation which i guess you'll be doing you may have done already or will be doing this afternoon so uh, Good luck in the rest of the competition. Congratulations on really well done, well-organized presentations and uh, take care, all right?